Hello and welcome to another edition of Cracking Cryptic, uh, where as usual on Fridays we're going to take a look at the diabolical Sudoku that appeared in the Daily Telegraph um, today. Um, now this was a funny puzzle, you can see the black numbers on the screen were the given numbers and the blue numbers are uh, those numbers that I was able to insert fairly quickly, you know, two or three minutes probably to get to this point, whereupon I ground to a halt. Um, and the reason is that the next piece of logic is quite hard to see and um, we've, we've covered it before in one of these videos but what we need to look for is one of these swordfish arrangements now remember swordfishes are essentially an extension of the x-wing principle so with an x-wing you have um, two possibilities for the position of one number in, in a row say and then in a different row those same numbers can appear in the same column so it just in two positions and once that happens you're able to eliminate from the columns uh, any other instances of that number that will appear now with the swordfish it's exactly the same logic but rather than looking at just two columns we have to look at three so if we look for example in this puzzle let's take a look at uh, row 9, you can see that there is a 4 in both columns 7 and 8 and that's the only place a 4 appears in row 9 obviously and if you spot something like that you should you should work on it, you should say okay well are there any other instances where 4's are only appearing in a particular row in a limited number of co columns and you can see if we look at column 5 here we have 4's limited to uh, columns eight and nine, sorry, seven and eight again. I think I might have said eight and nine before, but seven and eight again, um, and also column two. So now we're into swordfish realms because we can't just use the X-wing principle. We've we've got a third column introduced, so we need to find another row that has exactly uh, the same positionings for these fours. So the fours can only appear in columns two seven and eight so let's see if there's another one but this one won't do obviously fours are appearing in three and nine here and here we go look at look at row three in row three we have exactly the same arrangement of fours uh, i.e columns two column seven and columns eight so what that allows us to do is to eliminate any other fours that we can find in columns two seven and eight so let's see if we can find any we can find one up here there's one uh, more there da, da, da. More there So what does that allow us to do? Well, it allows us to eliminate any other fours we can find in these columns. So let's go on a hunt. Uh, one here. Let's get rid of that. Uh, no more in that one. Uh, no more in that one. So all of that hard work just allows us to eliminate the four in this square. But that is actually the critical point to solving this puzzle logically because now we're able to use um, this Y-wing technique that you'll have seen in the title to the video. Now if you've not come across Y-wings before and wondering what they are, well they're a bit like X-wings <laughs> um, but rather than having sort of four corners they only have three corners and the principle involved is, is actually very simple. So you need, um, you need three squares where the number of possibilities uh, in each of those squares, there are just two possibilities in each square, but where one square acts as a pivot. And let me explain what I mean. So let's have a look at this square here. Hopefully, I can I might highlight it when I edit the video later. You can see that this is a four or a seven. You can see this square is a two or a four. You can this square is a two or a seven. So we have three unknowns for three squares that all of, and they connect in a very specific way. So let's ask ourselves what happens if this square turns out to be a 4. Well, if this square turns out to be a 4, it has no impact at all on this square here. But it has a very important impact on this square. It forces this square to be a 2. And look, 
that therefore would force this cell to be a 6. Yeah, it eliminates this 2 here. But what happens if this is a 7 instead? If this is a 7, this square now is affected. This is a 2. And again, this 2 gets eliminated. So whichever way round this square happens to be, it impacts separately either on this one or this one, but it has the same effect on this one. It always forces this 2 to disappear. So we can actually write this in now as a 6. Now remember, it before we found the uh, this y-wing, we, ha we had the swordfish thing, and we had this arrangement. Now, you might say, well, could the same logic be applied here if we hadn't been able to eliminate this 4? And you can see it can't be. It's not as powerful. Because if this is a 7 then, this still would have two possibilities left over. And that wouldn't be enough to eliminate this 2. So it was very important to find the swordfish. And then we could use this Y-wing technique. Now, what I'll do is I might uh, load in a different example just so that we can have a look at another Y-wing type thing. Um, just to further hammer this home. So one second while I do that. Okay, and I found quite a good example here uh, uh, on the internet of a puzzle that contains this sort of technique and actually allows us to use it, use it sequentially. Um, so I've just uh, included there uh, some of the, uh, the most relevant boxes and the alternatives that are, are left for those cells just to highlight the point. So what I'd encourage you to do firstly is to have a close look at um, columns two and three and see if you can see how we might be able to use this this y-wing principle to eliminate a digit so remember what we need we need um, we need three three cells that contain uh, two digit, two digits each um, where there's only three sort of unknowns involved um, so if we look at columns two and three here you can see the only candidates are this cell this cell and this cell. And then you need one of these um, cells to see the other two cells. So if you look at this box here, you can see this can only see this box. It can't see this box. So this isn't the pivot. This is the pivot here, this, this 3 8 cell. This can see both this cell and this cell. And what that allows us to do is to ask the question, OK, well, if this is a 3, you can see this will be a 4. If this is an 8, this will be a 4. So either way round, any cell that can see both this cell and both this cell, that contains a 4, can be, uh, we can remove the 4, that, that 4 will no longer be possible. You can see exactly that here, this cell here, this, this cell, that we can actually remove this 4. And now we can use the identical technique again but this time on a different set of three cells. So now we need to look at um, rows seven and eight. If we look at rows seven and eight, we have this cell, this cell, and this cell, which contain uh, our three unknown digits with uh, two possibilities in each cell. So ask yourself, which cell has to be the pivot here? And it clearly has to be this one. This sees both this cell and this cell. Now, if this is a three, this will be forced to be a four. This is an 8, this will be forced to be a 4. So I, are there any cells that see both this cell and this cell that contain a 4? There is, this one. So we can remove this 4, and look at that, that gives us a digit. Um, so we could then actually enter this in with a 1 here, and that gets us off, again, off and going again. So um, really lovely example there of a sort of sequential wiring technique that hopefully will help you to incorporate it into your solving. Um, so another type of technique, I mean we've covered several in this series we're doing on the diabolical Sudokus, we've not looked at this one yet, so it shows how um, how tricky these puzzles are. Um, so well done to the Daily Telegraph for publishing them. Um, I think it's brilliant that these appear in the broadsheet newspaper. Anyway, I hope that was useful and we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.